In this lesson, we'll learn how to use real-world lighting data inside of Cinema 4D. Okay, so in this particular alleyway scene, I have this sort of a purple tint that's been applied. This is just coming from a simple light that I've dropped in here, a basic omnidirectional light. I've tinted this sort of a purple color, and I've enabled this ambient illumination option. So with the ambient illumination turned on, instead of making the light feel like it's coming from one particular point in space, with the ambient turned on, it's really making the light feel like it's coming from all directions, sort of tinting my entire scene. And I'm doing this to sort of just simulate sort of the ambient uh, nighttime sky. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop in the light type that we're going to use. This can be found underneath our uh, light menu. And we're going to look for this IES light. Now one thing to note is that if you're using Cinema 4D Prime or Cinema 4D Broadcast, you won't have access to this particular light type. This is only found in Cinema 4D Visualize in Cinema 4D Studio. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop this in. Okay, and if you take a look inside of the Introduction to Cinema 4D uh, project or Introduction to Lighting inside of that folder, you should see a folder called Referenced Files. And inside of that, you'll see this Digital Tutors Light IES. So an IES light or an IES file is something that you can get from an actual light manufacturer. And if you do a search online, you can actually find lots of different IES lights and light profiles from real-world light manufacturers. These IES files contain information about light uh, color, what that particular light's intensity should be, what its distribution pattern is, if there are any lenses that are responsible for any sort of refraction patterns in that light, it's all very, very detailed, and it's all based on real-world lighting information. So these are very, very accurate lights. So here I have a light type that I've created, or an IES file. And if we pop this in, we should see that, uh, in my case, we get sort of this odd little circle of light. But what this is actually showing me is the pattern that's generated by this uh, light and the lens pattern that's inside of that. So let me go ahead and click away from my render camera. Right now if I try to orbit around it's not actually going to let me do that because I am looking through this render camera which is locked down. So let me go ahead and just click off of that. There we go. And now if I pull this up we can actually see what this IES file looks like and we can actually see the light distribution pattern from this. So if I choose my light and go down into the photometric tab. This will actually allow us to see that light and what its pattern looks like. Here we can actually start to control the intensity of the light. So if we want to use any photometric illumination, we can adjust this based on a particular number of candelas, or we could base it on lumens and adjust our light intensity that way. So let's come in. We'll take our light and just sort of position this where we would want that sort of underneath here. If we want, maybe we could just angle that out a little bit more. So that way we get a little bit better illumination. But there we can start to see this light pattern that is being generated. And this is all coming from real world light manufacturer data. So I can come in here and let's maybe just control click on that light and I'll duplicate that. There we go. Now I can pull that light up here. Let me come in and rotate that light straight back down. There we go. Very nice. We can come in here and give these lights some basic shadows. So let's see if we can't come in here and give these some area shadows. Let's see what that looks like. So I'll press Alt-R on my keyboard. There we go. Now we can actually start to see some shadows coming from this light. I'll do the same over here. Give that some nice shadows. Right now, my area lights, if I come in and render this, they're not really giving me uh, really some soft shadows. So what I might need to do is go to my lights, go to the Details tab, and right now we do have it set to a rectangle, but the size is 0 by 0, which essentially is going to give me completely sharp shadows. So 
I could maybe come in and dial that up just a little bit. Let's start with maybe 2 by 2 Looks like that's not quite working out. Let's go back to my light. There we go. Let's maybe start to bump that up a little bit higher. It's probably going to be a little bit too high. So there we go. Try something like 50 by 50. And render that out again. There we go. That's starting to now give us some softer shadows in here. So we can do the same over here for this light. And you can start to see where these uh, are very, very useful for a number of situations. So like I said, you can come in and uh, download IES files from a number of light manufacturers. And uh, by utilizing this real-world light data, you can see how you can very, very quickly come in and simulate lights and other lighting effects that are very, very realistic because, again, they're based on real light information. So from this point, if we wanted to change a few things about these lights, we could certainly do that. So we could maybe take this light over here. And maybe if we wanted this to be maybe a little bit more yellow in color, we come in here, change that, and now we get a little bit more of a yellowish light off of here. Sort of a warmer light. Maybe to just differentiate these, we could take this light back here and maybe give it a little bit of a cooler color just that they don't look exactly the same. There we go. So we still have full control over that. We can come back here to the photometric options. And if we wanted to maybe adjust the intensity for one of these lights or dim one of them down, we have full control over that as well. Now as far as changing the pattern of this light, we really don't have any control over that. That is defined internally by the IES file itself. So we really don't have any control over the actual pattern of light that is being generated. But looking at this, you can see where this becomes, again, an incredibly useful feature for being able to bring in real-world illumination data and then use that directly inside of our Cinema 4D renders. So that's a look at how we can utilize this IES light data inside of Cinema 4D.